Hello Taurus Risings, these are your predictions for the month of November of 2024. I'm using Whole Sign Houses and the Tropical Zodiac. You can also read for this if you are a Taurus Moon or a Taurus Sun, but I always recommend reading for your rising sign, aka First House, aka Ascendant first, okay? And then uh, you can read for those other things as well. So. I will, um, there's going to be a new moon too on November 1st, and this video will include that because they, they kind of align with each other. So you're getting two for the price of one, you're getting transits and new moon predictions. All right. So what's interesting about this month is that Mars changes signs on November 3rd. And uh, Mars is a slower moving planet. It's not that slow, but it stays in a sign around two months. And it's moving into your, your fourth house of Leo, okay, on November 3rd. So that's kind of, you're, you're going to feel that transition because Mars going into the fourth will trigger some things around your home, uh, making repairs in the home. Usually when Mars goes into the fourth, you have to make repairs in the home because Mars is a planet of repairing things. It's a, it's a planet of fixing things and improving upon things. Mars's job is to fix problems, to solve problems and, and do it very in the most efficient and speedy way as possible. That's what Mars likes to do. And, uh, and Mars is a very logical planet as well. Mars gets, what they call directional strength in the 10th house. And so when Mars goes into the fourth house, that saps some of his strength. So during this month of November, you can want and have any ambition and have a goal you wanna reach, especially around any projects you're doing or a career ambition. And you can strategize how you want to do that, but there's going to be obstacles in your way. For some reason, things are always coming up that you can't pursue at your strongest enthusiasms. You can't pursue your passion or you do it in a way that isn't that effective. And that's because Mars is in the fourth house. Mars doesn't do that well in the fourth house. The fourth house is a house of feelings, emotional, security, emotional stability, happiness, contentment. And Mars is a planet of going after something, you know, using your will to pursue something that you're really passionate about and being hungry for something. Mars actually rules the fire element and it's the fire element that causes hunger. So we have a hunger for something and in the fourth house, we want to be content. <laughs> okay. We, we want contentment, peace, happiness, a strong emotional foundation. Now, when Mars is there, that can cause a little bit of emotional volatility. And, um, and that's why that Mars doesn't do that well in the fourth house. And, but Mars always has to transit your fourth house, someone's fourth house every two years. Okay. So, uh, so just be prepared for that. The thing is though, Mars has you fix something in your house that needs to be fixed. That's the purpose of it, the purpose of that transit or the more beneficial purpose of the transit of Mars through the fourth house, okay? Uh, and this can also have you fix or make some repairs on any vehicles that you may have too. So just be aware that if you're feeling a little more frustrated as usual, that you can't follow through with some strategy that you have planned, it's because of Mars's energy being subdued a little bit during this transit of Leo for a Taurus rising. Okay. And, uh, and that is for most of the month of November from November 3rd on. Now you start out the month with Venus in your eighth house of Sagittarius. And so Venus in the eighth house can cause some real strong ups and downs in the relationship life. It can cause, uh, if you're, especially if you're a man and you have, uh, you're a straight man, you have a girlfriend or a wife, it can cause some upheavals in the significant other's life. Okay. Because the eighth house tends to do that. It tends to put you kind of on a roller coaster or 
the spouse, the girlfriend gets a little, um, gets really interested in astrology or divination practices or occult practices, which is the eighth house, or even psychotherapy, okay? If, and now for any gender, when, when Venus is in the eighth house, you're going to get a lot of fulfillment from divination practices. You're going to get fulfillment from things that may be a little taboo, which is the eighth house. You'll also want to bond very strongly with your partner, or if you're not in a relationship, you want to bond with people that you are emotionally attached to. And that can be any relationship, friendships, family, whatever, anybody, anywhere, any, any person that you are emotionally invested in, you bond more strongly, uh, because Venus is the planet of bonding and the eighth house is a bond. Okay, it's the, it's the house of bonding, especially with others and trust. You may have to put your trust into somebody else. All right, uh, and try not to be overly sensitive to what they're doing or not doing. That This Venus going through the eighth house can make a person very sensitive. And uh, especially if they're in a relationship and what their partner, how their partner reacts to them. That will be until November 11th. Then Venus will move into the ninth house for a Taurus rising after November 11th for the rest of November. That's actually really good placement. Uh, you can get, a, you'll have be very lucky in your relationships. Your relationships give you a sense of purposefulness. All right, you have a really good relationship with your teacher from November 11th onwards. And I'm talking about teachers that you look up to that are like your spiritual mentors or philosophical teachers. And these are teachers that are embodied, that are actually living, okay? Uh, and um, also you'll have a lot of fulfillment from any higher education and you will get fulfillment from your inspirations. You'll understand which inspiration it is that, give, that will give you the most fulfillment You'll understand that and you'll make a decision that you want to follow that one, wh whichever one it is. You won't necessarily pursue it. You probably won't pursue it yet, but you'll understand what it is that gives you the most fulfillment in regards to what is giving your life purposefulness and meaning in what inspires you. The reason you won't pursue it is because of that Mars being in your fourth house and uh, Mars is needed to go after something that you really want, but you will, you will come to the understanding of what gives you the most fulfillment basically. And you'll be receptive to the fulfillment of higher knowledge, higher education, you know, uh, philosophy, religion, all those types of things and, uh, what it is that inspires you. So it's a good placement. And again, you'll get lucky from relationships somehow. If you're not in a relationship or a romantic relationship and you want to be, this is a good time to pursue one because, uh, or go on dates, something like that. Go out and have fun because uh, you get lucky from those things. Okay. You get lucky from luxuries. You get lucky from automobiles or any type of vehicle. You get lucky from taking vacations or just relaxing and getting away from it all and pampering yourself, all right? This is from November 11th onward. But generally speaking, you'll be a lucky person from November 11th uh, for the rest of November because Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus will be transiting your ninth house, all right? Uh, now, there is a Mercury, all right? So Mercury is the planet of opportunities. Mercury will move into your eighth house on November 2nd and be there the rest of November. Mercury is actually going to conjoin the new moon that occurs in your seventh house. And, um, and, but the next day it moves into your eighth house and conjoins Venus there. Now, Mercury is a planet of opportunity. Mercury gives opportunities to manifest on the earth plane because Mercury rules the earth element. Mercury is a planet of recreation and having fun. Mercury is developing skills and learning, getting the skills necessary to work that house in a way 
that is beneficial to you and that will give you opportunity. So Mercury moving into your eighth will make you very interested in any type of divination practices, in mysteries. You'll really want to investigate mysteries when Mercury moves into your eighth house. You'll want to learn about the dark side of life, so to speak. Learn about psychotherapy or psychological ways of healing and, and explore those areas of life. That's the eighth house. If you are, uh, you'll also get opportunities from your partner's resources. If you're not in a relationship, you can get opportunities to benefit from the public's resources. That's, and that means through grants, loans. If you're, you have a business and you sell to the public, you can get uh, quite a few opportunities through that venue. All right. It's good for business. If you are a business owner, when Mercury goes into the eighth house, then uh, you have a new moon. All right. The new moon occurs on November 1st. The new moon is always the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. It's a new cycle of gathering intel, incorporating that into your life, and then disseminating that out into your environment. That's what a lunation cycle is about. So when you have a new moon, you're beginning a new cycle in something. And for Taurus rising, that's in your seventh house of partnerships or relationships, especially romantic relationships. You can start a new cycle around that relating to somebody, compromising with someone, sharing with someone. It can also begin around your business. The seventh house is business. If you own a business or are thinking about starting a business, this is a good time to do that. And you will learn better business practices. You will learn about your business. If you're not someone who has a business, you just learn about how the give and take, the sharing, how you get value out of something and how you offer value to someone else. So you understand, you start to understand the value of things and sharing with other people. Okay. That is the seventh house. Also, uh, this can begin a new cycle of traveling to foreign countries. The seventh house is traveling to foreign countries or residents in foreign countries. It's also the public dealing with the public. If you are a person that relies on popularity, like a musician, a performer, an actor, you know, you, you depend on the public to pay attention to you, to, you know, if you own a business, the public buys from you, whatever that is. If you're a contractual worker, okay. Um, you're relying on business from the public. You're, you're going to begin a new cycle in those things. And it, that's going to provide opportunities because this new moon is with Mercury. So that'll be a big part of the month of November because of that new moon there. Then after November 21st, the sun will move into your eighth house. So you will have a sun Mercury conjunction in your eighth house and a sun Mercury conjunction is what they call a Buddha, a Ditya yoga. That's a, a highly skillful yoga. It means you have a lot of skill in something so you can have a lot of skill from benefiting from other people's resources. This is from November 21st onward or the rest of November. You also have a lot of skill in understanding yourself in any type, understanding your hidden motivations around something, what you do to self-sabotage. Uh, it's a very psychological deep house. It's the house of self-transformation. So you come to understand and are able to play upon your strengths and heal and transform your weaknesses. That's very important for the last nine days of November. Okay, so those are the predictions for a Taurus rising for this November of 2024. Thank you for watching. Bye.